from jazz to towering cathedrals to streets packed with people, New Orleans is filled with life in every season. But from hurricanes to flooding to extreme heat, it's also a city where Mother Nature has really flexed her muscles and climate change is fueling her strength. We've all been impacted by a hurricane. We've all felt how dangerous and, and oppressive the heat can be. Katrina, I had like eight feet of water in my house. We get real heat. In the U.S., New Orleans is one of the most vulnerable cities to the impacts of our warming climate. Its low elevation and coastal erosion combined with hotter temps makes a city more prone to increased flooding, sea level rise, and more frequent and intense storms. That means life in the Big Easy is expected to get warmer, wetter, and more humid. This whole city is at risk of flooding. According to Risk Factor, over 150,000 New Orleans properties have more than a 26% chance of being severely impacted by flooding over the next 30 years. That's 99% of the properties in the city. Corby Johnson and Madeline Batchman of the Upper Ninth Ward know that all too well. We can stand on our porch and watch the water rush down this way. Since I've been in this particular neighborhood, I think about mm, maybe over 20 years, and um, from each bad storm, my house has flooded. Austin Feldbaum, Hazard Mitigation Director of the City of New Orleans, knows there is room for improvement in the neighborhoods. We've got a long way to go in terms of the, our built infrastructure. We've got to make real measurable progress there. As the climate warms, hotter air holds more moisture, and that could mean heavier rains, more flooding, and stronger storms for New Orleans. The extra heat also adds to the city's challenges as an urban heat island. It tops Climate Central's list of 159 U.S. cities with the worst urban heat island effect. The average temperature in the summer is 16 degrees hotter than in rural areas nearby. An urban heat island is a phenomenon that happens in cities because cities produce a lot of heat and they also trap a lot of heat because of concrete and other hard surfaces, you know, we remove vegetation and replace it with parking lots. And then there's air conditioners and boilers and stoves and things that create a lot of heat. So it can be hotter in a city than in the outlying areas. As a city traps heat, it increases people's health risk. According to the New Orleans Department of Health, the number of heat related hospitalizations have risen every year since 2013. Black residents are over three and a half times more likely to visit the ER and two and a half times more likely to be admitted to the hospital due to heat related illnesses compared to white residents. Dealing with extreme weather takes time and energy and resources. So whether that's straining your household budget or just kind of wearing you out, making you feel like you're, you know, you're drained um, because you can't afford to turn on the AC. Um, so it's hotter in your house than it is outside, so you're losing sleep, right? So you're less healthy and less productive the next day. You mad if you that hot. Wouldn't you be mad if you was walking so as it was so hot? You couldn't just find you just a cool space? It's hot. These are long-term impacts that affect people's lives. Um, so I think, you know, these, it's just, I think, ultimately exacerbates the underlying inequalities and social factors. City government statistics show each year, on average, New Orleans experiences 56 days with temperatures above 90 degrees. Climate change may only increase the number. States at risk.org data predicts Louisiana will see one of the country's biggest increases in heat wave days by 2050. In New Orleans, the city's environmental layout makes some people more vulnerable to the heat. There's sort of a divider. If you go through New Orleans and you find the streets with big mature oak trees along the street, um, and then you you know maybe check what the home values are in that little slice along that avenue versus the parts of town, the major throughways that don't have a lot of trees, um, it's, you know, fairly consistent relationship there. The more affluent neighborhoods are greener. The greener the neighborhood, the cooler it is and it can even impact the green in your wallet. We are like the third most energy burdened community in the nation. So, you know, we're paying the most proportionally of our income for energy costs. So the heat, of course, is a major driver of that. Residents like Corby Johnson are calling on the city to help mitigate the flooding and the heat. 
it has to be everybody. We have to come together. And until there's education from the city, from the state down, we'll never get anything done. But we're gonna keep doing what we have to do because we have to, because no one else is doing it.